Yes, good afternoon. It's that time of year again. The time of year that we celebrate the Passover or Easter. The holiday that uh, Christians all around the world are participating in because of the resurrection of our soon coming Christ. Now, as we uh, talk about the show today, uh, most people um, this Sunday will be going to church, synagogue, temples, mass, chapels, cathedrals, or a place of worship. The reason they will be doing this is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. They say he died uh, went to uh, died, bur got buried and uh, rose again the third day. So this is why we celebrate Easter for the death, burial, and resurrection of our soon coming Lord. Now, the Bible gives us an account of the crucifixion of Jesus. It tells us how the accusers and uh, Luke, uh, I believe it's the 23rd and 24th chapter, Tells us about Mark chapter 15 and 16, and also St. John, I want to say chapters 19 through 21. I was reviewing those uh, over the weekend. And as many people know, Jesus came, uh, started his ministry healed the sight of the blind. He healed leopards. Uh, those that are were sick, he healed them. And the scribes and the Pharisees was always trying to uh, trap him. Uh, whether he healed on the Sabbath, a holy day, or a Passover. But there was one of his disciples we know, and his name was Judas as chariot, which sold Christ out for 30 pieces of silver. Now, as Jesus was uh, in the garden praying, they came unto him, those that are Judas as chariot, uh, Good afternoon, good morning, Jesus. Uh, good evening. Whatever time you're viewing this program, I just like to say, uh, bless, bless you. Hope you're enjoying the show. The day's message is about revival. Yes, revival. And before we start the message, um, I just like to say, does the church realize? The Great Commission that Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go into all the world. Read that in Matthew 28, 19. While we have been wars and rumors of wars, throughout the universe does the church recognize that there are millions and millions out there that is waiting to hear the gospel and to be saved yes they waiting and while some are bi building mega churches, big ministries, 
selling stuff. I dare to say there's souls out there that's dying, not knowing about salvation or being turned off turned off by the church. But I'm going to go into prayer and then we talk more. Precious Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We ask that you touch the the audience out here and touch the universe that they might hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. For there are many out there that's not hearing the word and they need to be saved. Lord, we ask that you bless everyone at the sound of my voice. Touch the lonely, the afflicted, those that are incarcerated, those that are on drugs, those that are sick and shed in. We pray that you would heal their bodies, comfort their souls, and those that are mourning, we ask that you bless them that they would have joy. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, now today, uh, I want to talk about revival. We need revival in the world today. Why was the, the communists rising? Uh, suicide at an all-time high? Yes, just look around. Every day you hear about teenagers or certain age groups of people committing suicide. There was an individual on a show uh, called Extra. Uh, this person was at the uh, height of her career. And she committed suicide. A few years ago, there was a newscaster in Michigan at a famous news station here that committed suicide. Why is this happening? What's the world coming to? And why can these people get the help that they need? Some are too afraid to talk about it. And some blame it on my, uh, mental health. But suicide is real. And it's at an all-time high. Cops and hatred groups are killing and bombing our churches. Some are shooting up our schools, our bars, and grocery stores. Now, I don't have the answer to this. And some people say, what does it mean? When you hear statistics that there's been over 174 mass shootings this year alone, and we're in the month of May, what causes this? I know that my Bible tells me in um, Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, in high places. Uh, drugs are hurting our young people. Uh, such as fentanyl or uh, LSD, whatever they take, Kush, you name it. And it's causing our young to be out of their minds and commit crimes. China, Japan, spying on our country. Russia locking, locking up our citizens of the United States. Inflation, burying our economy. Yes, this country is going through something. 
and we need a revival. We need a revival now. There is too much happening, and we are not getting in touch with God. We're taking things as they are and accepting it as it is. And it's only getting worse and worse and worse. Like I said, inflation is burying our economy. Homeless are starving and dying for food. I dare to say you cannot go to a country in America now and find homeless where it impact someone's lives that we know a friend or either a family member. They're out in the streets looking for food or shelter. AIDS is taking our people to the grave. And we still don't and we still turn our backs on God. Why? I know to do COVID nineteen. A lot of churches shut down. Ministries paused. Foreign missions was put on hold. But now things are returning back to normal. I'm not saying the age crisis is over. But people are going out more and socializing more. So do this stop us from being a witness? Do it stop us from going into the highways and byways to tell someone about the love of God? No, it doesn't. Back in the 70s and 80s, we had revivals all over Detroit. And some of you might remember these revivals. Uh, we had tent meetings throughout the city. SOS at Greater Grace uh, Church on Seven Mile. And for those that don't know what SOS stands for, it was Salvations of Souls. We had ministers like Huey Rogers from New York come in. Bishop uh, McKenzie, uh, I believe he's from Buffalo, New York. Uh, we had our diocese bishop at the time, uh, uh, Bishop Paddox from um, either Grand Rapids, Michigan, or either Pontiac, R.B. Paddox. Also, I can recall... When I went up the street to Woodward and Grand to purchase Bible literature at Grand Bible and Bookstore, I would get pamphlets, flyers, and it would be telling us about the International Sunday School Convention where they had workshops at Cobo Hall back in the days. And when I went down there to these conventions at Cobo Hall, the workshops, uh, it was in the 70s and mid-80s. And you can see people like uh, Jack Van Impey, Kenneth Copeland, Rex Humbart, uh, Fred Price, um, I believe Kenneth Hagen. The list goes on and on. You can meet people from various ministry, like Chapel of the Air, Haven of Rest, Radio Bible Class. They had hundreds of well-known evangelists, Bible teachers, ministers, theologians, and people from foreign missions 
they had Tyndale College representatives there. Uh, Geneva College from out of Beaver, Beaver Fall, Pennsylvania. The Bible College that I was going go to go through. Uh, they had people from Ambassador College out of Pasadena, California. They had P Zonderman Publishing Company there to wake up us and give us a spiritual renewal. But they no longer host these things at uh, Cobo Hall, Cobo Arena. Now, you have a leadership training out in Georgia, uh, California, and various places. You have um, women ministries from St. Louis, and I dare say some of the other parts of the world are doing their own meetings. Some call it conventions. But we used to have Campus Crusade for Christ at colleges where they witness to young folks, tell them about the Bible, and hope they get converted. We have rallies for Christian ministries that took place in Detroit and probably in your parts of town also. We had evangelist Maria Garden doing her thing on the west side where she had crusades. Her favorite word was help me Holy Ghost where she uh, was trying to get Detroit or say we can't forget about the TV show Faith for Miracles where we had Richard Brooks on the east side of the boulevard where he had his crusades and uh, healing ministries. Ralph Hart of Liberty Temple brought in little Richard yes the singer who got saved and was preaching about Christ and telling people that it was wrong to commit or to practice homosexuality and how he talked about how he got converted. Where is the church today when we need a spiritual revival? We need it now more than ever. You might say, why, Brother Whitaker? We haven't crime. We haven't war. We haven't drugs. We haven't hate groups that's killing our young black men and women. We haven't police that's putting their knees on our people's necks. We have in Koreans and uh, other groups shooting our black men in the gas stations and in stores. The war is on an attack of our people. We used to say it's a, it takes a village to raise a child, but it is not happening in our family or our neighborhood, we turn on the news and turn our heads like nothing had happened. What's wrong with us in Detroit and all over the country? Uh, back in 2002 or 2003, now I'm getting off the subject for a moment. I ran for city council. And the reason why I did, I was hurt. My heart bleed by the many things that's going on in our country, especially my city. 
The reason why I ran, because in my neighborhood and others, I hear about young boys being shot at gas stations because they're hungry and they're getting cupcakes or chips and they take them out to the store without paying for them. Yes, sometimes the school has missed the mark because they're not giving our people or our uh, children lunches, hot lunches, or lunch in school. So they feel that they have to steal. Some of the parents are not working. And kids don't get breakfast in the morning. So they go out and they might take something from a store or somewhere else. And they get shot and lose their lives. Or either I feel the store owner could have warned them or called the police. The worst could happen, they can release them to their parents or they can go to youth home or detention for six months. But when you take a life like that and feel that it doesn't matter, it hurts. It hurts the family member when they don't have insurance and try to bury their loved one. So I ran for city council. Another reason I ran, I get tired when I go outside and look at street signs, trees, and posts where our kids have been shot or either hit by a car. And you see balloons, you see flowers, you see pictures on the trees, and it hurts me. Yes, I'm angry now, but this is why I ran, because I said if I get elected, for those that had kids that was victimized, I would write a law where the family can get either $800 or $1,200 to help bury their kids. And this one in my notes today, but this is on my mind. Yes, we do say Black Lives Matter, and it do. I went to a up the street about 14 years ago. I was getting off of work, and this was school hours. A young female was 12, 13, or 14, and she was behind this gas station door. And one of the owner, but one of the kids at the gas station, I wouldn't say they was kids, because there's about 22 or more, offered this individual some candy, and perhaps she has changed her body with them. I got mad and I spoke out. Uh, but enough about this. I'm hoping this will open your eyes. Church, pay attention to your community. Now, enough about that. I'm going to get back to my notes. I had scriptures to give you today, but this is a short program and I won't be able to uh, go into all that. Like I said, Liberty Temple and Richard uh, Brooks and uh, Little Richard was doing their things as far as uh, salvation and water. Uh, Bishop Bonner and his TV program was blessing many and also his radio program. Leon Humphrey was, was doing his uh, meetings uh, and his revival services. Uh, my late pastor, the late Johnny L. Williams, was having in Northern District Council with revival and small churches and also young people from Indiana. He was giving them the platform to come and preach at his service to the youth. Uh, with the Sunday schools, uh, our Sunday schools was giving out food, and we had dozens of family that would come, you know, to these uh, services. Churches of the Northern District Councils. Uh, was preaching the Bible and Acts 4 and 12 where it said neither under heaven or earth there's no other name whereby men must be saved than the name of Jesus. During the 19th century we had men like Charles Spurgeon, Billy Graham, Jack Van Empey, uh, Oral Roberts, Rex Humbert, Jimmy Swaggart. Um, I'm speeding just to get through this uh, uh, list that I have. 
They was teaching and passing out tracts all over the country and, and proclaiming the kingdom of God, healing and salvation services. This was the, uh, the truth and telling people about the truth of God. These rallies were about the souls of our people. The truth, they was telling people about the truth of God. At these times, some of these ministers really cared about the souls. And I know I left many out, but this show is only a half an hour, so I wouldn't be able to list many. Now today, churches are having programs. Their schedules are to do things in time, and they lose, they loosen in their, prescri their uh, restrictions. They're going along with another principle. They're robbing the community with schemes of selling prayer cloths, water, handkerchief, bless oil, crystals, and other mess. Now the responsible, not, they're not responsible for our eternal soul. The Bible tells us in Matthew uh, 25 and 42, I won't have enough time to uh, revisit it, but I will give you certain highlights. I was in prison and you visited me not. I was naked and you clothed me not. I was hungry and you fed me not. You read that 24, 25, 42, and verse 43. Uh, now they sell all types of items. They build in their bank accounts and their wallets. But what about God's happiness? that we might be saved. Jesus came into the earth to seek and save that which was lost. Matthew, uh, St. John tells us in St. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Church, where are our revivals? We need it today. Uh, there is salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us rest on our morals. While many pastors are building large cathedrals and large cathedrals and churches, the poor are out there. Crime is rampant. Death is growing. Lies are preaching. Churches are fighting. Funerals are multiplying. Ministers are lying. Ministers are lazy. The souls are dying, but we need to be saved. Matthew 28, 19. Go out into the world. What are we doing to build up his kingdom? Do our word count? Do the Lord's words count? Revelations 3 and 16. Read that to 320. I know thy works, and because thou art lukewarm. Don't be lukewarm. Trust in the Lord and all thy words, acknowledge him, and all thyself, acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. We need a revival, America, it is time. Until next week, you've been listening to Growing in Grace. I'm your host, Chico Whitaker. God bless you. Let's have revival once again. Thank you, and see you soon in the neighborhood or church near you. Of a mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet. As Gabriel sang 